All right. So the recording has started. Ask, can you can you lead us in prayer? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, please go ahead. Father, we come to the throne of grace. Lord, thank you for this day you have given us, Lord. Lord, as we are going to learn from your word, Lord, about everything, Lord. Lord, the R you have given us, Lord, the students which we are having, Lord, the teacher, everything we pray in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, the world is doing, Lord, whatever they, they seems. But Lord, we are here learning about your word, Lord. Whatever we are learning, it should be added to the your kingdom, Lord, and it should not be wasted, but it should be used and it, and it should help us in equipping for your work, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sitkenu. Um, so we have been learning from chapter 11 in our notes, which talks about exercising this authority and dominion so one thing is to know that we have authority and dominion and another thing is to apply it and in the last class we looked at various ways in which we can employ or use the spiritual authority which we have so uh, we were talking about being defensive protecting ourselves from the attack of the evil one because you know here in the world we're constantly um, uh, open to the works of the enemy. So how can you defend? Then the next thing was, how can we offend the enemy? So while talking about that, we said that we have the authority to uh, uh, rebuke, command, cast out if there are demon spirits that have uh, taken occupation into a person, uh, an unbeliever, or influenced uh, a believer by demonizing them then we can actually cast out those spirits that's something offensive which we do we can destroy okay because jesus has already destroyed through the cross the works of the enemy now we can we can claim it we can uh you know declare what has already been done and that way what we are doing is we are we are uh, letting loose the power of God. And we've seen how the anointing ultimately is what will destroy the work of the evil one. Okay? While we are ministering, all these things uh, uh, become so helpful. We can also remove, right? we can remove the influence or the bondage that is upon people's lives. So these are all active ways, offensive ways, if you want to call it, in going after the enemy. And stopping him, we can overcome, overcome and prevail. So overcome and prevail is more like, uh, you know, getting the enemy under you. And, uh, you know, it could take a fight. It could take a wrestle for, for a while against the devil. But, you know, finally you have him under you. How do you do that? You do that in various ways. We can, uh, uh, you know, pray. We can declare God's word. We can... Um, uh, stand on the promises of God's word, do the right thing. Uh, so in many different ways, you know, we are going after the devil, we are fighting him uh, uh, out thoroughly and then we subdue him. So uh, in this way, we bring that enemy under. Also, we talked about how to use the authority, you know, the keys of the kingdom Jesus said, I've given you and uh, you can bind and lose. So God himself, gave, Jesus himself gave us some ways or methods that we can use. So binding would be like tying the hands of the devil. And we also said how uh, we can bind, but that does not exempt us from being wise and being practical so we can bind the enemy but then maybe there are issues that we have to be dealt with also we could simply say oh i am i am in a lot of lack okay i'm going to bind the spirits of lack or i'm going to bind the spirits of poverty but then uh what are we going to do about it in the long run you know maybe uh, there are some decisions that we have to make about our spending or we have to uh, uh you know take up some steps to increase our income something like that so basically binding is not like a permanent solution yes we have stopped the influence of the enemy but then we employ whatever steps need to be employed then lose lose would be to to set free 
okay so while using the authority of the kingdom of god we can set people free we said that woman who was bound up and shriveled um, uh, the command that jesus gave look woman thou art loosed so once the demon spirit was cast out she straightened up so losing people from bondages now we can see around us people are bound by so many things isn't it people are bound by um, uh, addiction people are bound by some sort of uh, uh, oppressive uh, you know thought patterns people are bound by lusts people are bound by um, fear insecurity so there can be many things which now have a demonic hold over people's lives so then when we lose them from it now you know people could ask us the question who gives you the authority to lose well jesus is the one isn't it he said in matthew 16 verses 18 and 19 he said i give you the keys of the kingdom uh, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven you know i will build my church gates of hell will not prevail against it so Jesus has given us the authority and we can go and set people free from the oppression of the enemy so these are all ways in which we can use okay i know i have authority what is the use have you ever seen uh, a traffic police you know wear the uniform sit in the police station okay but if that person is assigned to a uh, 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 you know a, a certain road unless the person goes there and does what they need to do blow the whistle or raise your hand stop the flow of traffic direct the traffic you got to do something now if you're not doing that how do you see the flow of authority authority is that authority is in the pocket but you know we got to use it so uh, when we are especially ministering to people we've seen know how how we can actually command bind loose cast out um overcome remove destroy all these things we can apply so how do we know uh, what to do in a given situation we have to be led by the spirit of god okay be led by god's spirit and you will know uh, okay this is going on okay fine you know let me do this uh, and uh, yeah you either allow you disallow you stop the enemy from doing what he is doing or you know pull down some stronghold you see that okay these these things in the mind i pull it down in the name of jesus so do whatever you need to do to uh, bring a freedom there okay so that's how it really works so uh, which one should i use in this situation that situation we would really need to uh, trust god and be discerning all right so yeah i would request people i mean if it's not required to not have the videos on please uh, so i can see one person's video is on so if you could kindly switch it off yeah thank you so much thank you for your cooperation yeah we will uh, move forward uh, yeah so now what are the other ways we also said prayer right so prayer is something very briefly we discussed last time where we can pray um we can pray general prayers over uh, our family we can say okay god thank you for your protection again that is uh, defense so we can pray that way or we can we've discussed about this prophetic prayers right prophetic prayers are when god's spirit puts it on our hearts to cover somebody with prayer and uh, you know the most unlikely things happen i'm sure you can also testify to it you suddenly think of someone and you start praying for that person and then that person actually tells you oh this happened uh, uh, good that you were praying for me because i needed it so what is that prophetic prophetic is in the now so now what is on god's heart what god is thinking he reveals it to us and there is a need at that particular time when you pray for the person so that is being led by the spirit or in other words praying prophetic prayer so even by uh, you could be praying like general prayers which is also using our authority uh, but we could also pray prophetic prayers which can be more specific right and when we 
pray for people sometimes you know bondages break sometimes the the spirit of heaviness is lifted i don't know if you've had that experience there like sometimes when people have prayed for me uh i i've i've experienced healing i i still remember i was quite sick uh, at one point uh, uh, and i think at, i don't know if i was studying or working at that time but i was quite sick for many days uh, in my room i was sick uh, it was like fevers were continuing and there was this one elderly uncle who lives around our home many people know him and uh, he would just go to different houses and pray okay so he is just like a simple ordinary elderly uncle who comes home and visits so he had come over to my place and my parents told him that i'm sick and this fever was continuing for a while so he asked them can i just go and pray for her uh, and uh, they said yeah you can pray so he came and prayed and i can't forget that you know the fever just lifted just lifted and i was fine the next day i had to go out for some work and i was you know uh, still weak but i knew that the fever had gone because of the prayer so something about the prayer that he prayed so we don't underestimate the power that you know prayer carries we could pray for somebody and uh, things could shift things could lift right attacks can be broken uh, uh, so many things can happen through a word of prayer and sometimes maybe you have prayed for people and they have told you that oh when you prayed you know i came in with the, all the, the this uh, disturbing thoughts but uh, when you prayed peace filled my heart or maybe there was an attack on the mind of that person fear intimidation anxiety but through prayer what have we done you know we have taken authority and we have released the dominion of god on that person and you know it's like replacing the kingdom of darkness with the kingdom of god what is kingdom of god love joy you know peace patience righteousness all this is part of the kingdom of god so now that attack is broken and here you have you know a a a a delivery of the 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 good things of the kingdom so prayer 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 can be your regular general prayer you may follow a pattern and you know we've talked about that isn't it we will pray for our family we will pray for the church we will pray for the city so through all this we are exercising our dominion and more specifically god can reveal what is taking place or what kind of an attack the enemy is planning so we've seen that in the book of amos how god revealed to amos and amos started praying in line with that and you know uh, he was able to stop the work of darkness so prayer intercession and here the specific example given in our notes is when jesus prayed jesus prayed for peter and said okay you know peter you are going to undergo an attack but i've prayed for you what it also does is it it protects the person it gives strength to the individual and so uh, you know they are able to come out of the attack that the enemy puts upon them so we can use through authority and dominion through our prayers okay now righteous actions this is what i wanted to uh, start with today so righteous actions is uh, a part of our amma and we see that uh, you know when we do what is right uh, it it will close the doors for the enemy so uh, even if he wants to create trouble or you know bring in an attack uh, you would notice that there's no way he can do it because here is a child of god who is covered in righteousness so um, some examples where uh corruption so in a given place if there is corruption but we as children of god when we are walking with integrity the enemy cannot attack us so we are using our authority by doing the right thing so let's take for example in a given workplace setting there's a lot of gossip there's a lot of slander uh, but you speak the truth you speak the truth in love and people know that that you are not the kind who will uh, you know speak against others 
unnecessarily and all that so then what happens because of that righteous way of living righteous way of doing life in the workplace you could say there's protection a press plate of righteousness that is protection against you enemy is trying to attack but cannot reach you okay so it becomes a protective covering uh, so in this manner we can be protected okay what about uh, right uh, you know like fairness and uh, justice esther is a classic example right the book of esther where there we see that there's a man uh, haman he's trying to plot against a righteous man mordecai and he does his part and everything is sort of uh, planned plotted ready to take down the righteous man but what happens you know god comes uh, uh, for mordecai's rescue and the tables turn overnight but how did it happen you know uh, not through manipulation not through uh, human influence not through all those things but even the plot of the devil got destroyed because of the righteous action of you know his people uh, through their dependence we also see in the book of esther how people prayed they fasted they depended on god so the righteous actions in the midst of you know some unrighteous things that are going on maybe what we are doing is opposite to what the people are doing but that's the whole point when we are going opposite to it you know we are creating a protection against ourselves and uh, thus we have taken authority and the enemy uh, we we will walk in victory the enemy cannot put us into uh, uh, failure uh, and defeat okay now sometimes sometimes restitution also helps restitution is uh, correcting oneself um maybe in i'm just giving an example in a family setting let's say the father has been very uh, rude uh, very uh, you know accusatory uh, he he has been very um, you know destructive with his words towards his children now uh, once the children grow up and maybe you know the father is now born again he understands okay i should never have done that it has caused a lot of damage maybe it keeps coming up in the relationship with his children uh, now if he steps up and he apologizes or says okay you know i should never have done that what i did was wrong the way i spoke was wrong uh, so uh, you know i take it back no but you are actually a you know a good child or you know you will prosper in your life they changed what they are saying they uh, are sorry for what they did and now they are making up for it you know by uh, turning around and doing the right thing that would be like a restitution in a simple example okay but you see restitution can also be at other levels like in a in a community if uh, um, a certain section of the community has been treated poorly sometimes there are you know people in the society they are called untouchables or you know so many things are there right but then when when people come into christ they realize that these gradations don't exist in christ jesus so uh, one may want to make restitution like zacchaeus and not this is not really giving back money or anything but in terms of the attitude in terms of uh, taking a righteous stand so one may say okay you know we have uh, ill treated this particular set of people uh, and uh, we are so sorry we will do something to make their lives better so maybe you know they are given jobs or something is done practically to show the change of heart they are blessed with some resources or they are blessed with um, houses uh, so at a community level also you know when we do that maybe in certain cities um uh, some crimes have been done against children or women uh, and 
people make restitution for it and say, God, we are so wrong. We were so wrong. This should never have happened. So, you know, here we are. We, we repent and uh, we make a change. So that is restitution, even for past wrong. And, you know, sometimes the restitution for past wrongs will close open doors. And that's how it helps. So we can take authority through our righteous action. And then what happens? You know, going forward, the uh, hold that the enemy had on the family or the set of, you know, on that community or the city, he loses it. And, and thereby, you know, we are able to continue victoriously. So that's also a way of expressing our righteousness. Uh, and forgiveness and reconciliation. You know, this is also very, very um, helpful. So many a time, the enemy can play havoc because of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness, again, you know, all these settings, unforgiveness in the church, unforgiveness in families, unforgiveness among uh, communities. Uh, so uh, then what happens? You know, there, there is uh, bitterness, hostility, anger, jealousy, envy. So many uh, works of the flesh have an opportunity to thrive you know, when people are not uh, ready to forgive. But uh, let's say once we learn, somebody learns, okay, this is what it means to be born again. This is what it means to forgive. Um, we have wronged people. So what happens? You know, we turn a change of heart and then we we go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to walk in forgiveness. So it's like a shut door on the devil. So now the uh, enemy wanted to totally build up on our unforgiveness and create all kinds of other problems. But now it's a shut door and he can't do it. So these are all ways in which we can take authority. And it also it brings so much healing, you know, when we walk in righteousness. So uh, know that this is warfare walking in righteousness in the midst of opposing circumstances is warfare. Walking in righteousness uh, as a restitution for past wrongs uh, and, you know, wrong attitudes. We make changes. That is also warfare. And the enemy cannot, you know, he can't just seep in, in, in some way or the other. So uh, we can keep these things in mind and uh, take our spiritual authority in this way. Okay, so, and class, please feel free to stop me at any point. You want to share uh, something from your own life or experience, you know, you please feel free to do that. I'm just continuing uh, because, you know, I, I need to cover the content here. But we are open for interactions. Okay, uh, power of agreement. But that's also a way in which we can take authority. Um, uh, it's it's uh, Jesus who said that you know where two or uh, uh, there are two or more uh, agreeing, touching any one thing, I will do it for you. So when you agree and you pray, uh, God will do it for us. So there is power in agreement. So then what we can do is when we are seeing the enemy, mm, uh, you know, have a, a, an oppression on somebody and uh, we say okay come on you know let's join together let's pray let's pray for this person there is more power you know released into that situation and that person experiences freedom maybe a family situation where uh, you know the enemy is trying to do something so how about husband and wife and uh, that's where you know having uh, the same kind of a heart in faith really makes a difference because both of them can agree and say, okay, we are going to trust God. We are going to have faith in God uh, for, uh, you know, this attack to be broken or this breakthrough to come. So two of them are agreeing and they are praying. So what happens? You know, the power of God is released. Now the flip side also can be true where there is disagreement, uh, quarrel, um, you know, bitterness, envy, jealousy, where is the agreement? And so that becomes a, that becomes a very conducive environment for the enemy to slowly creep in. Okay, so instead, 
agreement, create agreement. Even in the family setting, uh, where there is unity, we've seen that Psalm 133, God commands a blessing, but where there is no unity, what happens? Enemy can slowly come in in different ways. So maybe as a family, having times of prayer together. And it's not just physical together. You know, sometimes uh, we understand that, you know, we can be together, but hearts can be so, it can be poles apart. Uh, but that's not the point. It's more of hearts being united. And saying yes, you know, we want to see uh, this breakthrough. We want to see this healing. We want to see this deliverance. We want to see this increase. You know, we want to see this blessing. So when hearts are joined together, and we're saying, God, you know, you bring revival in our city. Hearts are joined. That's important. So then, what happens? Then the power is released the way Jesus spoke, right? In Matthew 18. Um, uh, 18, 20, and then again, you know, Matthew 16, 18, and 19, where we use our authority that in agreement we are able to see the release of God's power. So, part of agreement. Now, some of us might wonder uh, isn't it good enough for just one person to minister, one person to pray, uh, and God can still work, isn't it? That's true. You know, if there is a situation where we cannot get together with people, it's fine. We can still, as a, as a single person, you know, see God's glory. But uh, when we see Jesus send out his disciples, do you notice that usually he sent out, sent them out two by two, because there is value in agreement. So, uh, it's good to get together with other believers and, uh, you know, pray things through. So uh, let's say uh, if, if we are praying for our church or we are praying for our city. So if there are some points that, uh, you know, one person comes up with and says, okay, these are the things which we are praying for. How about, you know, we all join our hearts together and pray for this. You know, surely there will be a breakthrough. Okay. So, uh, and when it comes to praying for, for our city and our region, uh, you know, we've had these instances right across the globe where people have gathered in large numbers, they've gathered in auditoriums, uh, and, you know, they've all cried out to God for their city, for their country. Uh, we've talked about, you know, revivals that have broken forth. How how did, you know, such mighty uh, uh, outpouring of, of God take place? Agreement. People's hearts were united and they said, God, you know, we want you to do this for us. And then authority, dominion, we are releasing it. That kingdom come and it's being released upon us. So that's the way in which we can engage this power of agreement uh, to see God's victory. Okay. So um, moving on, the next uh, topic here is leveraging angelic assistance. So what is angelic assistance? Again, we have touched on this earlier. So if I want to use my authority, there can be certain instances where I say, okay, God, you know, we want your angels to step in. We've seen the responsibility of uh, angels. You know, they uh, protect. They can. Uh, they can serve like guardians. Okay? The angel of the Lord encamps around. Them. So they can serve as guardians or protection. Uh, we've seen that angels can bring messages from God. So maybe we are praying for the city and we're saying like, okay, God, we've seen that. You know, your uh, angels have brought your word and people have had encounters with the kingdom of heaven. So we pray that, you know, let, let angels come and minister to people. And for all you know, you know, you might start hearing testimonies of visitations of, you know, angels and uh, or of angels uh, bringing the word of God to people uh, and things like that. So see, basically they have these roles. And when we go by God's word and we say, God, we've seen this in your word and your word says this, you know, we speak that forth and we know that 
uh, uh, Psalm 103 verse 20, basically it says that angels hear the word of God. They act on the word of God. So we are releasing the word. And that's why declarations also are powerful because when we make declarations in line with the word of God, you know, the Lord is the king of the nations. So what happens here? In a way, you are activating angelic help um, uh, by declaring the word so the angels it's like you know they are empowered by the word that's their energy that's their instruction that's their command and they will start acting on it okay so uh we can speak the word and we would see angels get into position either as messengers or guardians or warring angels you know we see in certain passages in second kings 19 second chronicles 32 there were angels who went out and destroyed the enemy so <laughs> today is that possible can angels uh, be seen in a physical war destroying you know enemy uh, 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 soldiers yeah possible we've seen that in scripture there are these were of the category of war warring angels so when we pray you know, uh, and also we've seen, you know, word of God is one thing that will activate angelic uh, uh, support. So we are taking dominion on a, a given situation or even prayer. So do you recall when Daniel prayed, when Daniel prayed, uh, you had the prince of Persia and the prince of Greece. You know, they were fighting, uh, was that Michael? Yeah, I forget the name of the uh, angel. It, it's an archangel, you know, primary main angel. And there was a battle, right? But, <laughs> excuse me, what was the empowering or um, maybe the permission that uh, this angel had? It was through the prayers of Daniel. Okay, so when we pray also, we can... Uh, Sometimes people use the term like activate the ministry of angels. Simple. Basically, it means when we speak the word, angels will take charge. When we pray, angels will take charge. Okay. So, uh, and when they take charge, what happens? Their responsibility. We have seen that in Hebrews 1 verse 14. They're here to aid or help the heirs of salvation or we who are the recipients of salvation they are supposed to help us okay so they help us in seeing god's kingdom manifest so there are uh, you know all these ways in which we can take authority so do pray and uh, uh, you know uh, ask for angelic help and i think for me for a long time i never even prayed such a prayer that oh god you know uh, send forth your angels Till such a time when I understood, oh, okay, something like this is also available in scripture, then why not? Lord, as I do the ministry, and many of you are in ministry, you know, serving people. Uh, so you could pray and say, Lord, you know, we pray for your host of angels to uh, come protect, guard, um, uh, bring your message, ministry, minister to the people, uh, things like that. So we could, we could pray and uh, God will send forth his angels okay so that also is something we can experience uh, then of course when it comes to taking authority uh, very very important is to understand authority gateways okay? authority gateways so, so by that what we are saying is um, in a setting in a given setting God, there is a structure that God has assigned and the authority usually flows in that way and we can't uh, crisscross we can't uh, you know trespass against this god-given authority structure so what are these authority gateways in a family we see that um, uh, let you know in a family and a marriage it would be the husband who is set as the head over the wife and also the head or the person responsible uh, you know for the family as well and we see particularly that a uh, uh, husband is a spiritual head 
of the family so that's the manner in which the authority flows now when we want to see god work you know we we have to also go with the set structure in the family now a third pers person somebody outside of the structure i can't uh, intercept and say uh, that uh, okay you know i will take charge and uh, god is going to turn the situation around yes to a certain extent yes we could uh, you know use our prayer and declaration of god's word and you know uh, all that defense offense uh, pull down destroy remove we can do that but nothing like what the head of that household can do right so the greatest influence is with the the father of the house the husband of the house so when they take position when they take position you know uh it's like you can see the kingdom of god being manifest in the household so let's say you know the father is praying the husband is praying the husband is uh, you know giving instruction based on god's word to the family stirring the family in the path of righteousness there'll be a great blessing in the household so what are we saying you know we're talking about taking authority taking charge uh, ruling reigning dominion so correct authority structure you will have a blessing you will see progress you will see growth okay now let's say uh, in some situations maybe for some reason you know the uh, the the person is uh, very ill or uh, a demise of of the husband there are different situations isn't it in those situations the next person takes charge so maybe the wife has taken charge leading the household and all that but can still exercise authority over the family right so that becomes the gateway through which the authority flows now an external person cannot come and interrupt okay now that would also include uh, a person with spiritual leadership let's say i am a pastor and i am ministering to a couple Okay. now as a minister i can teach people from god's word and i can you know guide them give them inputs pray for them take authority i can do all that but i cannot control and ensure that they do what i am telling them to do so you know if i'm trying to exercise control that's more like manipulation ultimately it has to the authority has to flow in their way you know husband wife children that's how it will flow i even if i am a spiritual leader you know i cannot take the position of uh, okay husband's not making decision i will make the decision you all do it it will not you know you can't expect authority to flow like that because then we are actually disrupting okay so we are very mindful okay this is the way god has created the family husband wife you know then the children influence so now let's say i'm ministering to the children i can't go and tell them something secretly uh, you know okay you do this or you do that and you make a decision you leave your home you go study there you go uh, you know work there now if i do that and the parents re realize that oh even the, uh, we are not having a, a say on the decision of our child you know somebody else is coming in and instructing them that's very wrong we can't do that we have to let the authority flow the way god has planned it even if we are in spiritual leadership you know we can't interrupt and so that is why even when we are counseling children young children or uh, you know those who are minors generally it's helpful to say okay bring your parents let them also be there they should be able to listen and judge what i am saying as a as a leader or a pastor i can't you know in isolation try to um, counsel the child because child is very young child cannot make a decision for himself or herself they that is why god has given parental authority okay so it has to flow like that so whatever i'm instructing it should be in submission to the parents and the parents can say ha yes pastor what you're saying is correct yes you know your child you do like that so all these things but if we try to disrupt 
and I'm I'm subtracting parental instruction and I'm going in between and I'm saying, no, you have to do it. I'm the pastor. You have to do it. It's not correct. Okay, so authority dominion shouldn't be flowing like that. We, we are not respecting the authority gateway. So even when we are ministering, let's remember that. Okay, so when it comes to family, uh, the, the influence God has given for the parents over the children, and then again, you know, the husband over the wife and the uh, children uh, and the spouses over one another and, and the uh, parents, you know, over everyone who's part of the family. We have to preserve that, respect it, and then, you know, do our praying and our, you know, pulling down or whatever instructing people so that's how we do it okay now coming to the church when we look at the church you know it's very clear uh, in scripture the references are given so i'm not like you know taking us through each and every reference there but hebrews 13 is the reference given hebrews 13 verse 7 and 17 where we see that the leadership you know the, the pastor like you uh when you follow your uh, uh, pastor and their guidance like be honoring of that and don't make it difficult for them to to shepherd you and instructions like that are given so the pastor is the head of the local church okay now authority will flow in that way so there is great blessing when a pastor takes their position they pray over their people they instruct their people they lead their people you know there's great blessing great increase will come upon the local body now if they fail to do it then you know there is the results of that maybe there is other things can creep into the church so that should never happen so pastor should take their position then uh when it comes to instructing god's people now again you know take for example uh somebody else comes in a pastor of another church comes and they start instructing the people and maybe even instructing the people against their own pastor these are all wrong things God has established the authority structure in a certain way. So when I want to see the dominion of you know, God's uh, word, his spirit minister to the people, I should respect the governing authority in that local church. So let's say we are invited as a pastor, invited as a minister to a certain local church. We are going there and they gave us permission to share the word. Okay, Saturday, Sunday, you minister the word. But when I'm ministering the word, I have to be respectful of the authority structure of that church. So already there is a pastor and that pastor is instructing these people. So I should not say anything or do anything which will disrupt his work, which maybe this pastor has put in for years we may not understand what that pastor has been through, but we respect it, right? So I will not randomly, uh, you know, uh, instruct people, uh, you do this, okay, you, you start this group or you go off to another city. So when I'm doing things like that, how can I expect, you know, uh, the kingdom to flow in that, through that ministry? What I, what I am doing is I am cutting off the structure which God has already maintained through their pastor. So um, that would be disruptive. I think you're, you're not getting the picture. Okay, so I won't go into details of this. So honor the structure and flow with the structure. So what is a better way? Uh, so if I sense, okay, pastor, I feel like mm, you need to start another location. Uh, or uh, you know a group prayer group life group good way for me to do it is i submit it to the pastor so i'll talk to the pastor and i'll say pastor this is what i sense what do you think uh, can i do you want me to share it to the congregation now or you want to do it later then the pastor might say no no you know brother sister don't share now let me also pray about it. And maybe after you are gone, uh, it's a genuine word from God, a genuine instruction from God, but they apply it later. So that's fine. Or when we are giving instructions to individuals in the church, you know, how long you're working for this ministry, 
God is calling you to greener pastures and uh, he's calling you to a global ministry. So you go, leave this, you know, you go somewhere. But what is happening over here? For all these years, this pastor was, you know, uh, one, the one who was grooming this individual. Now we have come, we have disrupted everything. That's not right. So we have to submit it to the pastor. Maybe a better way is to uh, submit it. Now I was praying pastor and I sense like this for such and such an individual. Uh, I wanted to let you know. Now you know this person better. You counsel them, you guide them. That pastor may say, okay, brother, you only share, no problem. Then you do it. Otherwise, you know, getting in between there and creating all this confusion, you know, we can't expect ruling and reigning and, you know, dominion of God's kingdom uh, if we do things in a haphazard way. So respect the family structure, respect the, the local church. God has positioned a pastor there. God has positioned elders there. So going and disrupting all that, uh, that's not right. Then government leaders, officials, head over the people. So uh, we are told, you know, you honor uh, the officials, you pray for them. So we do that instead of uh, grumbling about government leaders and putting them down, openly putting them down. So you know, in doing all those things, we will actually lack authority and dominion. But if we do it the right way, we, yeah, things may not be perfect in our city and our nation, but we as a church, we are called to back up our leaders in prayer. We are called to back up our leaders with, um, you know, the um, prophetic prayers through uh, maybe counsel or wisdom from the elders of the church. So we are doing our part to bless all the time. We are doing our part to bless the nation, bless the regions. So when we are sincere, right, in, in doing it the right way, more authority will flow. You know, demonic powers, their influences will be broken. They will be evicted from that, uh, you know, that region. So there'll be great, tremendous victory that we will see uh, in our, whether it is families in our church or in the congregation, in the local uh, church body or in a region. So you know, things like that. So we, we just have to be very mindful. Oh, this is the way in which God is flowing the structure. I will follow it. I will flow along with it. And then you know, God would uh, bless it. Okay. So a uh, couple of insights here, uh, which are given for somebody who is in a position of authority. Maybe you are the husband or you are the, uh, the uh, pastor of your local church or a leader. So what to do? Exercise your spiritual authority. Okay? Exercise your spiritual authority on behalf of the people. So prayer. Remember we said how beautifully uh, one of the roles of a leader is prayer. So Moses, he always prayed for his people and that brought, you know, good direction, blessing and uh, God's protection over the people. So leadership, one of our main, main roles is pray for your people, exercise your spiritual authority. So we can also come and we say, okay, it's a time when people are losing their jobs, but Lord, we claim and we say our people are blessed. You are opening doors for them. They are being fruitful in famine. So as a pastor, when I'm declaring this over my church congregation, what happens? Blessings flow authority flow. Similarly, you know, father, husband, you pray over your family, you take that spiritual authority, exercise it. Also, um, be very careful because whatever we do, uh, even the wrong things that we do, it could affect the people under us. So let's say uh, a pastor is in unrepentant sin. What happens? It's an open door. Right? It's even an open door for the congregation now, not just for that individual and their family, but the whole congregation uh, is open to the attack of the devil. So unrepented sin. So we have to be very careful that we close every door. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> especially because we are in authority and through our life, the enemy should not be able to touch anyone. 
so it's a position of authority but also position of responsibility so remember that always remember that god has given me authority i have to be careful i have to do the right thing because it is not just going to touch me but it is also um, you know a place from where others can be affected okay so uh, i'll stop here uh, it is 10:49 i hope you all are learning something uh, class is it beneficial some response i really thrive on your response no response is very difficult yes ma'am thank you for your teaching okay. it's very beneficial and helpful okay thank you so much zit kenu yeah yeah thank you for you know uh, speaking that and i can see your comments on the chat so thank you everyone so glad you're learning something okay let's go for a break we'll come back pick up from where we stopped okay so yeah see you soon see you in 10 minutes thank you